Welcome to A New Life in Christ, the radio ministry of Agape Family Worship Center, where Mark McVeigh is pastor. We are located at 4111 Maple View Drive in Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45432. We're also on Facebook. You can friend request us at Agape Family Worship Center, Beaver Creek, Ohio, or follow us on YouTube at Axeman for God. That's A-X-E-M-A-N, the number four, God. Join us now for a service already in progress. All right, if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to go with me, if you would, over to the book of Hebrews. We're going to begin in chapter 1, and then I'll probably get over into the book of Jeremiah. But uh, just a, a, a sensing of the Spirit of the Lord this morning, that God is doing some awesome things in the lives of those that are seeking His counsel and opening their heart to receive of Him. Amen? It's not just a, a, a blase, blase, business as usual time for the church. I believe that it's a time that we really need to begin to turning up our prayer life, and seeking the Lord concerning uh, the Word of God and the transformation of the things that are happening in and around our lives, that God would begin to direct and order our steps even more keenly and more accurately than ever before. That comes with an act of obedience and directive from the Lord. I'm also going to share with you some things this morning that hopefully will give you some insight that God wants to pour out upon you uh, power to stand against the, 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 the things that are happening in these end times that we're living in, and uh, also to give you an awareness of what's uh, coming upon uh, the house. I mean, the, the church is going to come under some heavy fire, and we need to be ready to stand with all readiness with the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, just turn there with me over to the book of Hebrews chapter 1. While you're turning, I'm going to just ask God's blessing on the rest of our time together, and that He would just pour out upon your lives. Father, we thank You. We give You praise. We ask, Lord, even right now, that You'd touch the hearts of each one under the sound of my voice, and Lord, that we would not only ready ourselves, but Father, that we would also minister to those that are around us, because we've all been called to the ministry of reconciliation. So Father, even right now, we just charge uh, our lives with the Word of God, and ready us to do that which is uh, upon your hand, upon our life for the things that you're ready for us to do. And we're careful to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Here in the, the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, it says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he is appointed heir of all things, by whom he had made uh, the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels and as by, has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, for unto which of the angels at any time thou art my, has he said, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when, she, when, when he brings into the, the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And in verse 7 it says, and of the angels he hath said, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. I, I want to pause for just a moment there because I really feel like that the anointing of God that has been placed upon the lives of believers is to take it past that element of saying, well, you know, there are spirits that work in the world and there are spirits that work in people. It's very obvious and evident that Christ has become not only our Savior, but he also has given us the ability to take a stand over every element of the world. And I think a lot of us fail to realize that, that it has given us power over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. What are the serpents and scorpions of the world? He's talking about demonic spirits. And so we have not only the ability and the uh, <clears throat> spirit of God in us to transform those things that are around us by the word of God. I, I, I really feel like that it's important that we begin to speak the word of God over circumstances and over situations and allow Christ to rule in our lives in a way that it's going to transform not only our lives, but cities. Amen? So I believe that we need to begin to look at some things concerning prayer walks. I believe that God would have us, you know, I've, I found myself uh, having a desire, and I know it's cold outside, but just to get out and move in some areas that are dark. Somebody said, well, why would you want to go over there? Why would you feel 
compelled to go there. I feel like that God is calling us to be that which is called the church. We can look at James and John and Peter and Paul, and we can say, well, those are the, the apostles of the church. Those are the, four, the fathers of the church. But listen, who is the church today? You and I are those that have been called and appointed by the word of God to go into those dark places and proclaim liberty to those that are bound. Now, we have a responsibility with that as pastors, as teachers, as apostles and prophets and evangelists. I believe that God wants to open our eyes to some things so that we're not just going through the motions, but that we're truly doing some things concerning the word of God that are going to impact those areas. If you would go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2, and I want you to see this because we have been called to do some things that will transform the thing. Amen? Because a lot of times we get too busy talking about how bad it is and, oh, would you look at that? That's so ungodly. Well, I want you to know that God's purpose in his word is, is, first of all, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Somebody say all men. I don't think that that just means those that are sitting in the church, but I believe that we have the responsibility of the word of God to pray for those that are lost that we would seek the counsel of God's word for strategy in order to touch their lives for the, for the, for the cause of Christ. I, I, it's easy to point the finger, isn't it? It's easy, well, like I said earlier, he's going to put away through the putting forth of the finger and speaking of vanity. I believe that God wants us to make a difference in the lives of people, not just by what we say, but by how we act. Just the other day, I posted a, 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 a post where that uh, had a picture of a homeless man sitting on the street with his grocery card. And I remember a time in my life where I was uh, uh, making great money in the industrial laundry business. And to make a long story short of it, I had been uh, servicing an account downtown. And as I came out of the place, there was a man that was sitting on the sidewalk. He had wet himself and there was a ring all the way around him in urine. And he stunk. He needed a bath. And there was a wine bottle there and a brown paper bag laying beside him. And God whispered in my ear and said, I love that man just as much as I love you. The problem is he doesn't know it. And see, a lot of times that's where we are. We're so stuck on ourselves and our own little agenda that we fail to see the needs of those that are around us. And I'm believing that God is going to begin to open our eyes to some things uh, in order to recapture the value of evangelism and reaching into the lives of people, making disciples. You know, we talk about uh, uh, reproducing reproducers that reproduce, reproducers that reproduce, reproducers that reproduce. In reality, all that means is a, a cooking up with somebody that you're going to disciple and train and equip with the word of God because there's a lot of folks that get moved in a church service. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can get moved in a church service and get convicted but never get saved. Maybe perhaps the word of God is planted in their life and all of a sudden the cares of the world snatches it away from them because they're so caught up with other things that they never begin to grow in the Lord. And it's so important that we not only teach, train, and equip, but that we also duplicate in them the thing that God has done in us in that gifting. That's, that's just the reality of what God wants to do in you. Hallelujah. So as we begin to understand that, I, I want us to see that he's called us to exhort and to pray and to make supplications for kings and for those that are in authority, and that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God and our Savior, who will that all men would be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. I believe that we understand what the scripture says about our lives, but there's even a deeper level that God wants to take us to when it comes to reaching the lost. I mean, it's great that we're here this morning, and I, I'm excited about the presence of God that fell in this house uh, while we worship and extol his name. But I'm going to tell you something greater than that. There's a world on the outside that is broken, that needs fix, that needs encouragement, that are bound by addictions and habits uh, that are literally destroying their lives right before our eyes. And it's wonderful that we're here today, and it's wonderful that we're encouraged in the word. Uh, but even more than that, it's more than just trying to build a bigger house. Uh, it's more than just trying to expand the borders of our tents. Uh, it's about touching lives uh, with the anointing of God's word that is literally going to change them forever. 
You know, I, I can think back of some of the missionary experiences I've had, and I, I remember going to Russia for the first time. And, and when I came home, I was so excited because I had met a man. His name was Gregory. I met him on a train, and he was sitting there. His, his coat jacket was frazzled all the way around, and his shoes had holes in them. His, his cuffs of his sleeves were broken and, 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 and tattered. He was not a well-dressed man. In fact, I, I felt a little overdressed singing across from him. I was in a London fog coat a nice suit, brand new Florsham shoes. Uh, and, and I was there as a representation of Christ. The interpreters could tell I was wanting to make conversation with him. Michael, I said, how are things with you? And he was so anxiously wanting to talk to this American. And he said, Minyazavut is, Minyazavut Gregory. And I met Gregory, and I told him that my name was, was Mark, and that I pastored a church in Dayton, Ohio. And, it, and then he began to say, things have never been so good for me. I didn't say it in English. He was speaking in Russian. And the interpreter was sharing with me, getting excited more and more as he, as he began to speak. I found out that this man had grown up under communist rule where he worked in train stations and, and, and steam stations, uh, and he had been brutally beaten. And he, he said, all along my mother had taught me the word of God privately in our own home. And he said, for me, things have never been so good. This year, he had the equivalent of $3 monthly income. My heart sank. He said, I have 15 pails of cucumbers and 15 pails of cherries and all the potatoes I could ever want. I came home and I preached a message that godliness with contentment is great gain. Because I'm going to tell you something. As we begin to open our eyes and our ears to the things of the Spirit, a lot of times people calculate the kingdom of God in dollars and cents. I don't want you to get in that mindset where that money is the rule that operates through God because God operates with things that are necessary in order to get you where you need to be. Did you hear what I said? Godliness with contentment is great gain. And while some will covet to be rich and seek after the wealth of the world, will pierce themselves through with many hurtful and painful lusts. But he said, avoid these things and pursue godliness is what the word of God says. Because a lot of times is this, as we find ourselves going through the motions uh, of trying to get things uh, in order to appease our flesh, and God is saying, look, I I believe that you're missing what's the point here, because the time that you spend working, you could also spend time working. But see, a lot of times we don't understand that because we're seeking a kingdom, not a kingdom. And we're wanting power, not necessarily power. See, the power of God's word will transform who you are on the inside, literally give you vision for the things that God is opening before you for the kingdom of God. If you see today, if you forget my name and don't remember even uh, where you saw me, uh, if I see you on the outside, that's really not the important part. But the important part is, is that you have found Christ in your life uh, through an experience that you have found even through the things that you have heard. How many know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? I could tell stories and share with you many kinds of funny things. uh, But listen, the reality of it is until you get the seed of God's word in your spirit, ain't nothing going to grow that's going to produce fruit that will remain. I could talk about all kinds of things that would literally spark your interest and stir you up. But I want you to know that godliness with contentment is where the gain is. Go with me if you want to get over to the book of Jeremiah chapter 23. I, I, I am so excited about what the scripture says concerning our life and ministry. Last week I shared with you that uh, there's a scripture in the book of Hebrews that requires a level of commitment with a pastor, a teacher, those that handle the word of God. He says they are those that will give account. Every word that we speak, everything that we say, the things that we do, Our actions, our motives, our life is an accountability to God. In the book of Amos, I want you to see this because a lot of times we wonder, well, what's coming next and how's it going to be? God has already set forth through the word of God those things that are coming. He says, surely the Lord God, and this is Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, surely the Lord God will do nothing but that he reveal it first to his servants, the prophets. 
And as the, as the lion roars and as the, as the trumpet is sounded in the streets, uh, who can but prophesy? When the word of God begins to be stirred up on the inside of you, uh, you can't be quiet about it. Oh, it might aggravate some folks uh, when you begin to speak the word of God. But let me tell you this. Uh, the word of God will set the hearts of those that are captive free if they will hear it. Amen. Also understand that the word of God is not always mixed with faith. That's why it's so important to pray. I believe that it's important that we pray that the word of God would have free course in the lives of those that would hear. I don't take my job lightly. I love you. And I love God. And I love the work of the ministry. We're living in the last days. It's not a, a, a question. You can open the, the scriptures and find that in truth, we are living in the last days. So the prophet Jeremiah begins to proclaim, Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, uh, uh, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them. And I will bring them again to their fold and they shall be fruitful and increase." Listen, I feel like that there have been a time and a season where people have been made merchandise of. They have uh, uh, allowed themselves to be controlled, manipulated, and redirected financially. I've had people tell me, Pastor, I, I had used to do this, and I used to do that, and I used to give, but I quit doing that because I had people come and begging me for money, and they was using it for their own pleasure. I'm going to tell you something of what happens when that occurs. It not only affects them, it affects the whole future of the ministry. Because there are people that are wounded in spirit. There are people that are scattered uh, by those that have made merchandise of people uh, and misused funds, misdone things, uh, and done things out of the will of God. This is what the scripture says. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of those prophets uh, that say unto you, they make you vain, they make your vision vain, and they speak out of their own heart and not out of the mouth of God. I'm going to tell you something about prophesying is so important. I believe that personal prophecy is real. I believe that prophetic utterance is real. And God has a purpose for that to accomplish his plan in this hour. God didn't do away with the prophets. God has not done away with the gift ministries uh, of the Holy Ghost. If you begin to look uh, at what the word of the Lord says in Ephesians chapter 4, he said he led captivity captive uh, and he gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles and prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Now the passage of scripture here in Jeremiah, he's saying, woe to those uh, that have heaped to themselves treasures for themselves. And I'm going to tell you, a whole lot of folks are doing that today uh, when you begin to look at the wealth of a man uh, instead of the wealth of the church. Come on now, God didn't call me to be a multimillionaire. If he did, I would begin spreading the wealth uh, and touching the lives of people. Somebody asked me the other day, if you played the lottery, what would you do if you were to win the lottery? I said, I'll tell you what I would do. I would do the work of the ministry uh, with a greater spirit of excellence. Uh, I would expand the borders of God's presence uh, throughout the nation. Uh, it would not fall upon one church. Uh, it would fall upon many churches. Uh, it would be the ability to raise up generations generations for the kingdom of God and it would release the anointing of God in such a way that it would transform cities. Listen, a, a million dollars in the hand of a wicked man, a million, a million dollars in the hand of a, a drug dealer will cause drug widespread in a community. You know that's the truth. You look at what's happening in our cities, uh, in our communities, uh, where they have to block off whole streets so that people can't just come in and drive through. I want you to know that God has a relevant word for today for the people of God. If we are blinded by the riches of this world, and if we have set our affections on the things that are here and not in the heavens, we have missed it, we have missed it, we have missed the prize. God has not called us to try to get wealth and gain wealth. A lot of folks are trying to get all they can, can all they get, and then sit on the can. I believe that as God gets it to you, he needs to be able to get it through you. So as you begin to open your heart to the things of the spirit, what would you do if God were to bless you with a great deal of money? Listen, he can't trust you with the couple hundred a week you got. Come on now. 
Well, pastor, how, how do you know that? Because I know that if we're, if we get a little money in our pocket, we, we're off to HH Greg, or we're running over here to, to, to Lowe's, or, or we're trying to find something to heap into our own pleasure. I told my grandson the other day, he's standing at the bubble gum machine trying, you got a quarter, you got, you ain't got a quarter, you ain't putting it in there. I believe that God wants us to transform cities with the word of God and by the way that we live. How are we going to do that? I said, when you share the gospel of Jesus Christ in my post and use words if you have to, because you see, it's not always words that you're speaking that are making the impact. It's how you're living. It's the testimony of your life. It's the testimony of God's grace that he's imparted to you. You don't have to be all philosophical and about the way that you understand the scriptures and say, oh, I just, I just, uh, I just know God's called me to, to do this and I'm going to do this. Listen, it's time that we begin to set some things in order with our lives. Have we become a burden to the Lord? I asked Bob that this morning as I was going over my scriptures and the reason being in Jeremiah chapter 23, it says, for as the, the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord. I am not burdened with the message as a burden that is yoked as if it's a ball and chain in my life. I am burdened for the lost. And my passion is to pray and intercede for those that are broken and hungry for something they don't even know they're hungry for yet. Don't have the answers to. How can I, how can I be a father? There's young men that are, that are, that are coming in time where that they're, they're going to be marrying and don't even know how to be a husband. Getting ready to be a daddy and don't even know what it is to be a daddy. Oh, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to look for my vision. I, I'm going to go get my thing. I, I'm getting in my destiny. Listen, uh, once you have made a commitment to that young lady uh, and you have brought children into this world, uh, your destiny uh, is to birth those children uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, and until you are ministering uh, and effectively using the house of the Lord uh, to bring you to that level of presence uh, that is going to patiently pastor your children and your family. How are you talking about a ministry? Hallelujah. God wants to set some things in order in your life so that he can use you in the future. God is directing and ordering the steps. Listen, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And though he fall, the Lord will uphold him with the right hand of his righteousness. But don't be foolish with the things that God has appointed for you to do. One of the critical things that is happening in the world today is fatherlessness. Young man planting their seed all over the town, violating every young lady that so needs a father figure in their life. And we wonder what's wrong. It comes back to the truth of God's word that even as Christ is head of the church, Christ is, the head of a man. I'm going to tell you, just straight up, you get a messed up man, you got a messed up family. You get a messed up family, you got a messed up home. You got a messed up home, you got a messed up city. You got a city that's messed up, you got a messed up state that represents a messed up nation with stinking thinking and no idea how to govern or rule. That's where we're at. A fatherless generation has come to fruition, and we wonder what's wrong. Standing right before your eyes and you don't even see it. We need a return of biblical ethics and direction. We need a return of the things of the Spirit of God. We need a return of prophets uh, that are going to speak the Word of God in faith. Because see, personal prophecy is not for me just to go off on a whim uh, and speak any kind of thing. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, I, I've got a feeling. Listen, I have a word, a more sure word of prophecy that through the blood of Jesus Christ, he has come to redeem the lost. See, that personal prophecy better come out of the spirit that is bathed and saturated in the testimony of the 66 books. I like what Bishop Hammond says uh, when he said a, a personal prophecy uh, is when you dip that uh, uh, bucket of the, of the God's word down into the 66 books, the wellspring of life, and you pull that bucket up out of the word uh, and you begin to pour out somebody a drink 
in due season. It's in the life of that that will bring transformation and blessing. You can't just prophesy out of your own spirit. I just was hoping, I never will forget, I was ministering in the Word of the Lord conference over at CI Family Worship Center, and there was this young man there, and where's, uh, there you are, you were with me. This guy, he was prophesying to everybody, and uh, wasn't my house, so I went and got the, the head of the house. But I'm going to tell you, he said, oh, the, the word of the Lord. You're going to be so stinking filthy rich. You like race cars. You like, you like uh, sports cars, wouldn't it? I see you driving a red sports car with rims. You like big rims and fancy. He, he's telling me, this is what you're going to get and this is what you're going to have. I looked at Jerry and I said, this man's a false prophet. God doesn't pr- prophesy fancy cars, big houses, and stuff. The word of the Lord, woe be to the prophet, woe be to the pastor, woe be to those that scatter the flock. Because I'm going to tell you something, when you speak a word over somebody, when you release the anointing of God to say, thus saith the Lord, it better be thus saith the Lord. Because somebody is going to answer for that word that has been spoken. Somebody is going to answer for the, for the thing that happened in their life after they left and fell apart because it wasn't true. Come on now, the word of the Lord says the truth will make you free. You want free? You get with the word of God and you begin to open your spirit to the things of righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. There is a testimony of God's word in the New Testament that says prophecy. When you, He said, I would that you all speak in tongues, but rather that you prophesy for edification, for exhortation, and for comfort. That's where the word of God meets the heart. A lot of folks just get all excited when, a, oh, well, bless, bless God. Never will forget, and I'm going to close with this. Someone came to me, and it's been a little over a year ago, and they said, oh, there's a, there's a prophet in town. I'm bringing him to your church on Wednesday night. Didn't ask me, did I want him to come? Didn't ask me, would I like for him to speak? Remember that, Brother Bob? He came, and he sat about right here. Just so happened I was preaching and ministering that week, and was in a a series of teachings based out of the book, Strong Man's His Name, What's His Game? I don't think that it was by chance that he showed up the night we were talking about false prophets. Well, immediately when this fellow showed up with his little entourage and the fellow that was so adamant that he come, he said, are you going to get, will he have a time to speak? And I says, nope. The Holy Ghost is going to do the teaching tonight. Watch and learn. Now that wasn't arrogant, but there was a little bit of righteous anger in me because I learned a long time ago, if God has given you a message, I don't care if Billy Graham walks through the back door at the last moment, you do not surrender the pulpit. Amen. Because if God has given you the message for the hour, you don't just turn over the microphone to somebody just because they say, I got a word. It's important that you know that the house is protected. Did you hear what I said? The house is protected. There is a resident anointing upon this house. There are people that are here that I know, that I know well, that flow in the giftings and the anointings of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to worry about them. I've been there and done that. I was in a church for years that when we started feeding the homeless, they said, well, that's good that you're going down there. We got a bus and they were planning to bring them to church. And in the last minute, no, we can't do that. It might be culture shock to some of the folks that are not used to that. You know, some of those people don't get a bath regular. And Well, I believe that Jesus went to the lost house of Israel. We're so glad you tuned in today to Agape Family Worship Center's A New Life in Christ. If you'd like to send contributions or donations for the radio ministry, you may do so by sending it Agape Family Worship Center, 4111 Maple View Drive, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45432. It is our hope that the message has truly blessed you today. And until next week, 